I was putting. I Pl- hit me again, Spadoni. No, give me the meat. No, okay. Shoot, <laughs> I shouldn't have asked for it. Oh man, hey, I don't want to hear a word. I don't want to hear a word. I'm sticking up for my man Goo today. Not even going to mention the day of the week. That's Evan Giddens. No, no, don't talk about that. He's in for Goo. Goo was. Oh, let me tell you something about Goo yesterday. I can't catch a break, man. He he played hurt yesterday. Halfway through the show, I'm like, what? The? I'm like, Goo, what? What is going on with Goo? And then I forgot he came in yesterday. And he's like, oh, my stomach's killing me. I'm out. And he just got worse and worse. So. Get well soon, uh, Guru. Evan Giddings will will have your back. So uh, yesterday, we talked a lot about Willie Mays, and we were batting around a ton of things, no pun intended, uh, before the show. And the boss says to me, what hit you yesterday about all the talk about Willie Mays? And I said, Willie, he clearly affected a lot of people, even people that he never knew and he inspired people that he never knew. And he also said, well, it doesn't feel like anybody has a bad thing to say about him. Or anybody, uh, you know, they're just there's nothing out there about Willie Mays that compromises his integrity. And so we just started batting around names of, of the greatest athletes and their reputations and how it affects the way people look at them. And so I'll just jump off right here. So Nahigian goes, well, I mean, Willie Mays, he was perfect. Like he was the perfect superstar. He was one of the greatest players of all time, which is part of the category. And he was, he was perfect. And I said, how about Curry? How about Steph Curry? Like, what do you think of when you think of Steph Curry? He, he's pretty close to perfect, too, isn't he? Oh, I think that's why it's so hard to believe that there will ever be anybody like Willie Mays because, well, Steph, I, I think, is about as perfect of a superstar as there is and we'll ever see. All we heard yesterday or the day before in his passing was, in addition to all the great things about his character and his impact, is like he was the greatest player ever played. And there's some debate, right? But... I think the overwhelming consensus is that Willie Mays is the best to ever lace him up. You know, not to diminish Steph, but I don't think anybody's going to remember Steph Curry's the greatest basketball player to ever play. So that's where I think he's so unique. But but to kind of broaden it, like, you're right. The idea of a great athlete being non-controversial is extremely rare. Like, it just doesn't happen. And so while Steph might not be the greatest basketball player ever, I would argue that because of the amount of eyes or camera phones or just overall coverage that he has, Willie Mays played in a a much different time of our country that made things difficult. Right. But with how much attention Steph Curry gets, you could make the case that it's harder to not be controversial, to not have something... The but, right? When people write your obituary or when, right. they, when they eulogize you, there's there's the but. Well, he was a great player, but. Right. He was a great person, but. There's no buts about Steph. There's no buts about Willie Mays. And that is distinctly unique. Yeah, and just letting everybody in on how, how this comes about is, you know, it kind of was born to me, this, what we're talking about out of the, out of the Giants. And... We all talk about the Giants. They need a star. They need a star. They need a superstar. They need a star. They need a star. And we just started thinking about, okay, well, like what kind of star would you want? What what kind of player would you want? What kind of personality would you want that player to have? And we we just started batting stuff around, and uh, that's what we're going to do to start the show. Because the the boss was like, okay, well, let's let's go through some of the great ones. And he said, uh, you know, Joe Montana. What about Joe Montana? Well, you know, why isn't Joe Montana Willie Mays, for example? Not, I, I mean, I don't mean it that way, but... Yeah, he's th- arguably the greatest in his sport. What do you think, of, what do you think about Willie Mays? Uh, Joe Montana. And I said, well, you know, Montana, prob- what Montana doesn't get that love because I think 49er fans consider him a little bit aloof and also because... 
he he has seemed to distance himself a little more from the 49ers than some of their other players like Rice and Steve Young. And so we're just trying to we, we've just been batting around names and how big of an imprint, a positive imprint they've made on a city, uh on fans and maybe even on the franchise. And what 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 would you want? I mean if the would you want a Steph Curry? Would you want, you know, Barry Bonds? Well, you can't think about Bonds without thinking about PEDs. Okay, what about uh, Ricky Henderson, one of the greatest to ever do it? Well, self proclaimed. What do you, what do you, th- okay, let's just do it this way. What do you think of when you think of Ricky Henderson? I think of Oakland, California. Okay. I think of a hometown kid who got to the major leagues and did some things that we've never seen before. Like that's, that's where he is. Kind of like Steph, or Steph is kind of like Ricky. He's, he just he broadened your imagination about a sport. Like it was impossible to think that someone could steal as many bases as Ricky did for as long as Ricky did. But also to have the power of a leadoff hitter was pretty rare. Someone that hit at the top of the order to hit twenty five to thirty home runs a season that could take you deep, that had a great eye, that was basically a walking you know, triple every time he got to first base because he would steal second and third. That just never happened before. There were players that stole bases, but there never there was never a player that had the entire package together. So who also had the distinct connection to a community that he was from. Right. So that's why I think of Ricky and why is Ricky so great to me is because Ricky's also still in the community. Ricky also still does things for his hometown. And I think that that's one aspect of it. But you touched on Montana, which I, I think is at the center of everything about you know a superstar that you want. I think, obviously, you need to be great. I think you do need to be a champion. You have to have achievement. But you also, in spite of all of that, the game does is not about you. Like I, When I think of Willie Mays, I don't think about somebody that drew everyone to him. He played. He spoke with his glove, his arm, his bat. Curry, everything does gravitate around him, but he doesn't make it about him. It's about the game. It's about the team. Montana, however, and I think it's because of after he got traded, feeling, I don't know, spite for the 49ers, and even some of the the ways he kind of conducts himself now. It seems to be about money. It seems to be about, um, you know, hit whatever, like his brand, the Montana brand. And so I think from that standpoint, it does appear to be a little less selfless than, say, the greatest greats that are able to be selfless. Like Willie Mays, I think what we heard yesterday for four hours, is a pretty selfless guy. Yes. Yes. And that's, that's, kind of, that's kind of at the heart of this. You're listening to Mays, and apparently he had it all. He had it all. He was among the greatest. He had an unbelievably... Uh, uh, magnetic personality. Kids and adults liked him. Men and women liked him. Black and white liked him. It just feels like he he was the total thing. Now you said Ricky Henderson, and anybody wants to jump in here, eight 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 nine five seven nine five seven zero. Okay, when I think of Ricky Henderson, I think he. I know he's an Oakland guy, but I I think he should be bigger than he is. In, in terms of, and I'm not saying he's not loved in Oakland and the Bay Area, but to me, Ricky Henderson's stature as a player is greater than the the love that he should get, if you know what I mean. Like, I know he's in Oakland, you can see him out and about, but what what held Ricky back? If, if you know, was it was it his ego? I what, mean, what I mean, what, what held Ricky back was he would probably say Ricky, <laughs> you know. True. True. I mean, Ricky was always trying to get his, but but that was the era that he played in. It was post free agency. Right. He was one of the biggest superstars. He came about at a time when you could make a million dollars, and that just wasn't like Willie Mays couldn't make make a million dollars in a season. He couldn't. Right. He might have been one of the most high paid players for the time, but I do think that's also part of it too, and why to me someone like Steph Curry is great is because Steph Curry can command. $60 million in a year, which is just unfathomable, I'm sure, to someone like Willie Mays. And yet, it doesn't feel like he acts like he is $60 million better than the next person. True. True. He, he acts. 